watched some walkthrough of Breath of the Wild, and I would love to play that you one. Should but play I, just have, I just don't have the time. Hawkeye is a show about Marvel's Hawkeye. Kind of. Ah, Hawkeye was the name of the character in MASH. (laughs) (laughs) Hawkeye is not to be confused with hot guy, but you could call him a hot guy. Very Ah. nice. Hello, everybody. and Welcome (laughs) to Falling Towers. Watch the first podcast podcast, which watch the first episode of a series so that you don't have to. You could, but you don't have to. Joining us and trailblazing, as always, Mr. Michael Kenyon Rosenberg. Me. That's my face name. My name's Ryan T. Husk. I'm usually here, too. We are joined by a very special guest, actress, model, cosplayer, fabricator, probably a few other things. There's, there's a lot Goner. more, but I had yeah. Maker. <laughs> It's so funny because you started off with the one thing that I do the least amount, which is which is still funny though. But and then you ended with the one that I do the most amount, but that's okay. <laughs> I forgive you. I forgive you. It's not like you know me that well anyway. So <laughs> well, in my own words, I would say you're a costume designer, fabricator, cosplayer, writer, model, and actor. That's what I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So, yeah. That's, this that's sounds a better way right. to say that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it today- flows better. <laughs> Yeah. Today we're doing a review of Marvel's Hot Guy, apparently, uh, which is uh, <laughs> the first episode entitled Never Meet Your Heroes. And if you'd like us to review a show, simply put type in WTF in the comments below and whatever show you'd like us to review. So it could be like WTF The Smurfs or WTF Scooby-Doo or WTF SpongeBob Square Butt or whatever it was. And or that, WTF MASH. MASH for Hawkeye, right. <laughs> yep. And that stands for Watch the First. So just type that in the comments below. Please give this video a like. Please subscribe because that is very important. And look at Jackie sending out hearts. Let's have I some am. fun. So, many hearts. so first and foremost, Michael and I have known each other like forever practically. Uh, so we are and pretty day. good at predicting what the other person likes or dislikes. Uh, this is our favorite segment. By ours, I mean mine. And Mike likes to call yeah. it predicaments because we put ourselves in a predicament by making a <laughs> prediction. All right. I see. I thought there would be mints involved, and it would be really nice smelling. Yeah. But I also Go remember we are in just... completely different locations, so I would not be smelling any of those. Pop predicaments. a predicament. Yeah. Pop it in. Pop That's what we should do every time. Pop one in, and then boy, oh boy. <laughs> That'll be fun. Uh, so we make predictions. Uh, Michael, my prediction for you is I predict that you liked it, but not a huge hell of a lot. You liked hmm. it okay. You liked it just fine. Uh, Jackie, I think you liked it a little bit more than just fine. I thought you were like, hey, man, yeah, I, I, yeah, go get them. <laughs> Uh, but that's what I thought. <laughs> My very Mary Jane of you. Yeah. <laughs> my thoughts, if I'm going to tell my, what you think, what I think, what my thoughts are about what Might you guys well. thought. Um, Ryan, I think did not care for it. He's a minus on this. Oh, um, he's a minus. Uh, and then Jackie, I think she did like it. So I think she's a plus, maybe mm. not a plus plus but a plus Ryan is at least a minus, but he might even be a minus minus. Yeah. And uh, Jackie just solidified uh, what we thought of her (laughs) because when you said a minus, you went, Whoa, like who would ever not like this show that I love. Uh, I'm more surprised like, cause you usually like things. So that's why I thought like, Whoa, okay. Yeah. I I always like everything a a lot or whatever. (laughs) <laughs> but you and I don't always agree with things either. So I'm just saying, Very I just true. found it shocking. Maybe I find it shocking that you and I might have agreed on something for once. See, that's right. So Jackie, mm-hmm. uh, what do you think? Did I like it? Did Michael like it? I think uh, you thought it was a movie. I didn't think you probably thought, or not a movie, but uh, like just a show. Like there, it, it had its good moments. Movie and show. But it probably... But it didn't, it didn't hook you or something. That's what I think for you. Uh, 
for Mike, I think uh, I think Mike liked it, but not loved it. Like you know, it's like ah, oh, I'm just sitting at the edge of my seat for the next episode. So that's how I feel about you two mm-hmm. for liking things. Yeah, <laughs> that's my prediction. Uh, so everybody at home, it's your time to shine. You've gotten some hints. You've gotten some hints. Michael thinks that, boy, I just couldn't be bothered. Jackie thinks, hey, maybe. Uh, but we both kind of think Jackie was like, eh, we're like with Mike. Uh. So uh, you tell us what you thought. Uh, make your predictions now, whether I liked it, Michael liked it, or Jackie liked it. And uh, while you're doing that, Michael is going to tell us what the show is even a boot. Mm-hmm. This series is based on the Marvel Comics superhero. Hawkeye, centering on the adventures of young Avenger Kate Bishop, who took on the role after the original Avenger Clint Barton. In this episode, Archer Kate Bishop lands in the middle of a criminal conspiracy, forcing Hawkeye out of retirement. Yay! (laughs) Very nice. (laughs) All right. So this is I it, learned some guys. stuff that I didn't even know about the series just by reading that that I hadn't read before out loud. See, I never read those things, but every time you read them, I'm like, oh, I should read these things. But it's kind of nice to just go in fresh with no thoughts. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Mm-hmm. so now we like to compare and contrast what we expected versus what we actually got. Jackie, you will be surprised to know that Michael's got a name for this one too. Uh, uh, well, Ryan, Ryan came up with this name. I just like to say it. The name of this segment is Expect Getchens, where we take what we expected versus what we got. It's our Expect Getchens. Gotcha. Cool. Ryan's I like favorite it. Name, yeah. This is his favorite segment. <laughs> nah, nah. Um, but one of them, definitely top five. Mm. Um, okay, so here we go. Are you hearing that? I'm hearing a little distortion in the air. Did you hear that? Okay, good. Then no. it's just on my end. Great. Anyway, uh, so we compare and contrast yeah. what we expect versus what we got. Michael Canyon Rosenberg, before you watch this first episode, what did you expect? So I had not seen anything about the show, but I had heard a lot of great stuff about the show. I've heard I heard a lot of people uh, raving about this show. Uh, so I was expecting. I was expecting. I mean, it's a Marvel. It's Disney Plus, you know, Disney money, so Marvel money. Um, so I heard a lot of good things. So I was expecting this to be a really good show. Well, Jackie, before you watch this first episode of Hawkeye, Hot Guy, what did you expect? Uh, so I have, like, I mean, I didn't watch it right away, obviously. Um, I uh, saw a lot of people post about it but I, it wasn't like an overwhelming response people like oh you have to watch it like how everyone was about uh uh the loki. latest spider-man movie yeah or uh-huh. loki or or in, or any of the other really really also really really good shows or whatever um but uh yeah i like people said that like oh this was really really great but my i tend to come into a, anything that's marvel related having kind of the cookie cutter formula Mm -hmm. so um it's not that i came in with high expectations or low expectations i came in with okay this is the expectations of marvel so i'm not anticipating to be super duper impressed or disappointed it's like okay let's let's see let's see this marvel movie take place or not marvel movie but marvel marvel show take place Mm. so um and i have friends that are like super duper into anything marvel so i also kind of gauge like okay how did you like it and then versus the friends that aren't really into marvel movies and how did they like it and stuff and it was mostly my marvel loving friends that were excited about it so it's like okay i'm i'm expecting a very marvel-y movie (laughs) marvel movie or not i keep saying movie show but yeah movie show okay movie film movie show yeah marvelous Well, 
Margaret Mara, sure. I'll tell you what I expect before I watch mm, this. Now, that's I know, what we want to hear. I know who uh, <laughs> Cock Guy is here, right? I know, I know him. I remember the Marvel movies. Uh, I've seen them a bunch, or at least the Avenger ones. And, you know, he was cool. He was like the also ran, which I think is maybe what they're trying to do is flesh out more characters. Um, but I feel, I feel like there was a lot of buzz. I feel like I heard multiple people saying, oh, my God, you got to watch Hot Guy. You got to watch <laughs> this show. It's so good. Every, you know, so I was kind of expecting it to be good. I knew who the main character was going to be. I knew it was going to be Marvel. You know, everybody's talking about it. So I was thinking, okay, this is going to be probably a really good show. Um, and so that's what I expected. That's it. Um, but Michael, what did you actually get, though, is the question. I actually got a show that was not that good. Um, uh, it didn't even have that much Hawkeye in it. But it did have a, a, a the Rogers musical that was pretty stupid funny too though. Well, <laughs> that is your shortest what I actually got ever. Uh, but Jackie, what did you actually get when you watched the first episode of Hot Guy? I kind of got what because I I'm very I'm already very familiar with like the Marvel movies and everything already, so I kind of got what I expected. Um, like oh no, like he's being forced out of retirement sort of deal uh uh i'm sure there was like i kind of anticipated that like there's a girl in like all the uh posters and everything i'm sure they're gonna focus on her for a while so i kind of got what i expected it's like okay like revving it like revving it up and everything warming it up this is the warm-up episode so i got what i expected I think you're muted, Ryan. I can't hear you. Yeah, so, I can't hear you. So sorry about that. I had to type something. And so I had to mute myself so as not to be mm. distracted. Oh, good. Um, so I guess my I turn to tell you. I was giving like the wrongest answer. So. <laughs> nope, you gave the bestest answer. So I'll Yay. tell you what I got. Um, I got a show that was not bad. Anyway, so that's what we got. <laughs> I mean, you know, it wasn't it wasn't bad. It wasn't I, I didn't think it was good. I did not think it was good. Right. Um, but there's there was nothing overtly bad about it. Like it wasn't terribly written. It wasn't terribly acted. Um, there was nothing that yeah. that really just dropped it into the gutter for me. It just it wasn't terribly interesting. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> nice uh so you know it was you know whatever uh i'll tell you though i, I do want to start off by pointing out what i did like about this show personally um which was i thought the premise was very good like the first few minutes the first several minutes I was like okay this works this is great we get to see the avengers and how it affected other people, although it went in a different direction than I expected. When I saw that, I thought it was going to inspire that little girl that sees all this death and destruction. I thought it was going to inspire her to kind of be like a super villain, like saying, I hate the Avengers. The Avengers killed my dad. The Avengers did this and did that because she's just a, a little kid. She didn't understand, you know, the ramifications of everything. She didn't understand they're the good guys. So I thought that this was going to be more a show about how she grew up almost kind of trying to kill the Avengers. And then eventually the series is about them coming together and her, you know, realizing that they're not so bad or something like that. That's what I thought the path mm. was going to take. But yeah, it was still might have been more interesting. It was still a really good premise, but yeah, it was it was a very safe premise. So it wasn't bad. It just wasn't what I would have thought would been would have been great. It's funny because that would have actually made a lot more sense because how would she have known that she was saved by Hawkeye because the arrow came from the other side and you can't see the arrow shooting at the guy that was coming at her. So that would have made a lot more sense. I don't know. But also, yeah. Also, fact it's check. Saying. If if a, a spaceship it detonates and explodes right in front of a little girl, 
she's going to, there's going to be something. She's going to get thrown back or get burn scars or her, her hair's yeah. going to go. So it explodes there, like 20 feet of- in front of her. And she's just like, huh? I was like, uh, physics though. Yeah, ex- you guys. Yeah, no, I was like that. I was like, why did, why did the explosion stop there when there's an explosion? Like it still moves towards, towards right. them. And that's a lot of heat too. That would have like gotten all in her. So, well, you know, she got to keep her eyebrows or her, her little, <laughs> yeah. So it's fine. Got to keep well, the, little girl the answer. The answer though, Ryan is the Avengers. That's the yeah. magic. Yeah. Avengers. Don't forget about Avengers, that. Yeah. That's why. There that's were, why. I had a lot of fact checks. Also, like when the mom comes to save her from her new balcony. <laughs> she, yeah. The mom, <laughs> like, okay. A mom, if there's explosions and death and destruction everywhere, and there's a 10-year-old girl that's standing on the precipice of death with explosions, the mom's just going to grab her and run. The mom's not going to grab the kid and go, okay, so here's the plan. We got to get out of here now. And she's not going to touch. She's going to grab her and run. They had a quick little conversation before she went. I'm like, no parent's going to do that. They're just going to grab that thing by the ponytail and drag it as fast as they can. Like, get the fuck out of there. Come on, let's go. It's like, this is, uh, yeah, it's, it's not the lot. There are a lot of unrealistic uh, things that just hmm, like. Well, I didn't focus sure too much on that. that. You mean, know, I, I mean, it's a mar. Well, it's a I marvel, do all the so time. It's a marvel, so you know there's going to be unrealistic stuff. You know, oh, so, I yeah. mean, there's. Yeah. I mean, honestly, we don't have like aliens attacking us, and you know, we don't have like uh, like but swords that can like. We don't have switchblade swords, and you know, like this. You know, these things aren't like real, but. Uh, you know, it's like for me, it was just I think I, I guess so, what somebody said was that it was safe. And that's that's kind of like it seemed yeah. to me like they took every safe choice. They made every safe choice in making the show. And as a result, I was bored by it. I was like, what am I watching? Mm-hmm. here? And like, what is why am I spending my time watching this show? That's just it's, I mean, like, for instance, Loki, Loki was amazing. They made all sorts of really bold choices and like really fantastical things happen and that that was interesting that the whole show was interesting to me but uh, this show it's like everything that happens it's like uh first of all hawkeye is my least favorite avenger i mean i think he's most people's <laughs> least favorite avenger yeah but so, like, i tried not to hold that against show them, about yeah. Hawkeye anyway <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. yeah well i do yeah. want to say very quickly about the the realism or what's realistic and what's not because you know that that's a good point that like, Hey, there's no magic swords. There's no Avengers. So why do we care? Well, because yeah, you got to play within the rules that the show has created. The show has created a world in which there are aliens and there are magic swords. So you don't judge it by that, but it's also created a world in which humans are still humans that still act like humans and parents still act like parents. So we still have to judge them by those rules. And if a parent wouldn't normally act like this, then it doesn't make sense to me, you know, even if there are aliens, because that's just the world it, that they've created. It takes you out of the, uh, the uh, suspended belief. Of, it takes me out of, of it. Cause I'm all, very nitpicky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he is well, very nitpicky. I, I'm not, I, I don't think I'm as nitpicky, but even still things like that, it like bothers me. It's like, you know, there, there are simple ways around this. Like, like it could, like maybe he was even further away or something, or like at least show that, you know, it's still coming at her, but like you can have it declined or whatever. Like you can, you can have, there are ways around it. You don't have to take like the shortcut, easy way out. It's just lazy. That's how I see it as Mm. it's like, okay, you guys are being lazy. Thanks. But yeah. Well, laziness is underrated, but I will say a a few more things that I like. So first of all, I really liked that we were able to see the Avengers battle in New York from just a regular person's point of view because you have to imagine mm-hmm. that's got to be a really great you know kind of like that movie signs uh by m night mm-hmm. Shyamalan. i thought that was a great movie because you're seeing it just from a regular family's point of view just a person rather than just the big picture so that was really interesting i thought that the avengers uh uh musical theater thing was i thought that was very funny especially because yeah. i was like mm-hmm. why is ant-man there then he actually said it he was like <laughs> first like, he of all ant-man, ant-man was it because i stopped i was like there's seven of them who i was like okay that's this and i was like who's that freaking guy why is he here <laughs> so that was funny and you know yeah. and it was a catchy song it was a very catchy tune How i uh, i actually 
I actually recognized one of the uh, Broadway singers. Um, I don't know if he played any of the characters, but uh, it's the, he does a lot. He's done, uh, oh God, who was he? He was uh, uh, Ramnes or someone from Aida. Um, he like, he was the original is. actor. Yeah, from Aida is, is, it's a musical that Disney actually put on like way back in the early 2000s. Sorry, I, I was, I used to love Broadway like a million years ago. But yeah, I recognize right his voice good. for that. Yeah, oh, I don't know about that. No, I don't know. I, I don't pay attention to Broadway anymore. But uh, yeah, so, but yeah, I recognized his voice in there. I was like, oh, they actually got Broadway, act- like, you know, singers and actors and stuff on, you know, on this. That's pretty cool. Yay. It was, and um, it was good. And by the way, I think it was, I could do this all day, right? <laughs> And then yeah. they just kept doing oh, yeah. that. And you're like, you're like, yeah, this is fun. Guys. <laughs> Brian campy. has had professional voice training. So. No. Day. Mm. I don't remember if that was the note, but it was a high one. I could do this all day. Something like that, right? <laughs> I could do this all day. Yeah. The, uh, it looked at the uh, Scarlett Johansson. Sorry, not Scarlett Johansson. Ha ha. It wasn't Scarlett. Black Scar- Widow. It was uh, the Black Widow Broadway Window. actress. She looked like she was struggling a little bit with some of those like freaking crazy uh, gymnastics moves that she was doing that like not even Black Widow actually did. But, you know, that's that's very Broadway like the the Broadway show. They hit like every single like nail that that you can expect from a Broadway show. And it was that's what I loved about it um, and just how campy and, and dumb it was. Um, <laughs> but yeah, when when he started seeing her and he starts getting, you know, like the whole PTSD about uh, about Black Widow, um, I was just like, so the the terribleness of this musical is not distracting enough for you to. Okay, that's all right. But yeah, um, I kind of want to do like like one of those uh, <laughs> those uh, God, what are they? We did we did them like all papayas. throughout the like, no 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 not papayas Mangos. like the no mm. those those uh those crowd um mm. control uh, no crowd those surfing crowd where those people who come out in crowds and they like surf on go, them. like no they just they suddenly start doing I can't remember oh what flash it's mob it's embarrassing flash, flash mob. mob flash ah. mob flash. Crowd, get crowd work. Get pe- yeah, get people to flash mob uh <laughs> to flash mob that musical. That would actually be really funny if, if somebody did that at a convention. Like, but then you, so you take really notes, do everybody. Yeah, yeah. If 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 you know a girl who can do gymnastics, get get yourself a group together because you already have yeah. Black but if Widow. anybody does that, they better give full credit to Jacqueline <laughs> I Gunner. I just want to see it happen. That's all. That would be dope. Anyway, so, you know, yeah. Another thing that I thought was safe, just real quick, since I was kind of remembering the beginning of this thing, was when the dad says, oh, hey, pumpkin, don't worry. I'll always be here to protect you. I know I couldn't be the only Bullshit. one that typed in their Fun. notes. Okay, dad's obviously going to die, right? And he yeah. just, mm-hmm. dad or died. disappear. Yeah, there was no doubt about it. I, it was I, very I was safe. thinking that he's like going to go be the bad guy or something like that. Like, that's what I, that's what yeah. I, that's well, what maybe that is was. the twist. That's what my yeah, thinking was. It's like, oh, this guy's going to be the villain now. It, like I said, very Marvel. Like, oh, they're not going to show him actually be dead. So that probably means he's going to come back later. It's possible. Ooh, it's a twist shocker. later. Yep. Yeah. And considering the mom didn't even say, oh, he's dead. Like, you know, when she picked her kid up, like when she's like, where's daddy? And she's just like, she's like well, my problems are solved. <laughs> I can marry yeah. some rich guy now. <laughs> it makes sense though, because like she would inherit all like his money. Right. right. And like let's say he goes off and he's like, okay, this is the plan. We're gonna pretend I'm dead. No one's gonna find out. And then you inherit all this money, do all this business. I'm still like the puppeteer master man or whatever. And then, you know, like I can operate secretively or whatever. Like hmm. there. There are things that you can see at place that even though, even if that's not what actually happens, because I haven't seen anything beyond the first episode, but like it, Marvel does have a formula and usually you can see right through those formulas. If you've seen them all, Um, there are very few Marvel movies. There are very few Marvel movies or Marvel 
uh, shows that you can't really quite see through. Um, yeah, you could see so. through Loki. You know, you knew what was going to happen I, at the end of Loki. No, th that's why I said there are very few, mm. very few. I didn't say they weren't. Yeah, Loki uh, kind so of broke the mold. Though, Lo yeah. Loki broke the mold. Loki did so great. You knew what happened. You knew what was going to happen at WandaVision. You're like, all right, I know this is going to. Yeah. This is what this is. Mm -hmm. The WandaVision, I kind of had an idea of, but um, yeah. Well. Most of everyone else. Uh, all right, one more that. fact check. I've I've got a fact check. Oh, because I got a few. So if we're gonna um, stick on the fact checks, <laughs> you go right ahead. Um. So my fact check. I have to remember what it is now because I forgot it. So go ahead with yours. Okay. Fact check, guys. When you're fighting a girl that's going ah ooh ah, you're not gonna keep going. Hey, where's that guy? Get him. Like where's it's obviously <laughs> it's obviously a woman, bro. It's obviously a woman, bro. Oh. Like. Like, oh, I get it. My God. I get that the first, you know, thing you want to, that, that's a cute twist that's been done a million times and we get it and it works sometimes. And it's probably human nature. If somebody does something or fights and runs off, they'll be like, get him, get that guy. I know when somebody cuts me off, I go, oh, that guy, you know, I just assume it's a yeah. dude, right? Yeah. Anyway, sure. but when you hear that person, you know, squealing and grunting and fighting and, and, and gnashing her teeth and being obviously a woman through for a consistent amount of time. At some point, you're just being a weirdo. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, maybe maybe they just thought yourself. it was an effeminate man, though. Maybe. I, I don't know. But they could like, have she just really sounded like a girl. Yeah. For like, like. 10 minutes <laughs> up close and personal. Anyway, that was like, OK, guys. Yeah. You're trying way too hard here. And I understand why they did it. So then that way they're, they're thrown off the scent. They're looking for some dude. Who's this guy? Mm -hmm. You know, it's cute. We get it, but it, they, did it they did it poorly. They did it poorly. I remember That's my fact been... check. I remember yeah. mine. And so it's uh, like at the beginning, like the dad is like running out of money. Like they're about yep. to lose this penthouse. And then so maybe like they got an insurance payout from the damage or something like that, because then all of a sudden after the guy dies, like the, the, the wife rich. is super rich. Well, they may be and explaining so, like, that later on, hopefully. But then we also well, find out I mean, like the, the, faking the dude death, who wanted so. to marry her wanted to marry her for her money because mm -hmm. he didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yep, so how, how, how does she get all her money all of a sudden? Well, because maybe she's an insurance payout dealing with insurance these payout and Life insurance she, policies on her husband. Well, she's right, dealing with these weird guys and the, you know, so, so there's something I, I'm, I'm assuming and hoping that they're going to explain that the relationship she has with like that Armand fellow Armand, and whatever, right. all these people, that's where she got her money. And I, I think it would be horribly irresponsible and like embarrassing if they don't explain that in subsequent episodes. So I'm just assuming yeah. they will. Cause if they don't, that would <laughs> be pretty bad because they do open that door to where you're like, so right. what happened? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm assuming they will. My, my little fact check, and it was actually like following up on, on Ryan's, uh, in every friggin' Marvel movie, all the bad guys call each other, call whoever bro. They keep <laughs> saying bro. They say bro so often. It's it's like nails on a chalkboard. Wow. So all the oh, bad they're, guys they're... hang out at my gym. I'm not kidding. They all say, <laughs> oh, hey, what are you doing, bro? Hey, bro. Hey, get that bro. Whatever. It's like, find other words. Find well, it's because other... they're actually all brothers. That's what it is. Yeah. No, no, no. Not like they're talking to each other. They're they're the one they, when they were uh, when they were trying when they were beating her up or whatever or chasing her. They're like, hey, bro, like calling her a bro and stuff. Maybe like, okay, they thought we get she it. was you her, guys their think long lost she's a dude. Brother. That could be, their but I doubt brother. it. <laughs> I just hate it. Hey, I bro, is that our bro, that bro? That's all they use is bro. It's like, guys, like yeah, it's, it's, it's it's clear it's, who's writing the script. It's the it's same obviously a man's person. ear. Yeah, very good, good knowledge. Uh, another thing that here's something I thought was funny though. Okay, the urinal scene was funny ish because not not the not the, dr the dragged out scene that has been done before but because when he got to the urinal it says thanos was right that was funny mm -hmm. i thought that was cute um there were a couple other parts that i thought were funny like when he says i'm gary you know and he said gary told me and mm -hmm. he comes up i'm gary the delivery right. two words but he nailed it i thought the delivery was good and another cute and i thought smart funny part was when he had at the end 
she sees monogrammed butterscotch. I was like, that's, mm-hmm. that's a nice yeah. detail. That's cute. That's nice funny. Touch, yeah. I think that's the extent of the humor I enjoyed. But what do you guys think was the funny, ah, oh boy, the funniest moment out of all of these? Nothing. No <laughs> moments. No, I guess the funniest, some. the funniest, the funniest to me was just the, 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 the Rogers musical Rogers, yeah. the musical. That's, yeah, that Rogers was it. That musical. was the funniest part. It, it was a good, it was a good, it was funny the only moment. good part and the rest um, was not good. Like I like how she got herself out of the situation with Gary when she's like, see Gary, that's the thing. You didn't even learn to, you didn't even yeah. bother to remember my name. Like, it's like, and then he says, uh, and then she says she quits and, he, and his immediate response is, wait, you can't quit, even though he doesn't know her, or ever met her or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought that kind of exchange was cute and funny. Um, but yeah, like I see, like for me, I see potential later on in other episodes because, you know, there's a lot of exposition going on um, and like, yeah, but I, I'd say the musical was definitely the funniest moment. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and I did have one more fact check. Hmm. The Ronin sword will be worth more than a Triceratops yeah. skull. Probably. Yeah, maybe. I was kind of wondering. Maybe. I don't know, I but like, I would think so. It's a magic I, sword from the out of the galaxy versus, you know, a, a, a cool skull. It's yeah, considering it like the length of the sword is like three times longer than the hilt, and it goes into the hilt, wouldn't you? Wouldn't wouldn't you pay more money for that than a triceratop Magic, head? Yeah. Which you know there are men, there are more of those. There's only one of that magical sword. So well, wow, there's only there's that that could be the only one that's up for auction in the black market though too. So which one? The triceratops head. <laughs> oh, fine. What what was up with that watch? Oh, it's uh, an Apple Watch. Oh, I don't know. No, it's a Samsung watch. Oh no, it's uh, oh. <laughs> oh Ryan doesn't have a watch. <laughs> okay. Well, okay, so this is the question Michael always wants us to ask. Uh I usually fight it tooth and nail, but this time, fuck it, let's give it a shot. Uh who was your favorite character in this wow a minute? Wow a Ryan has Ryan has asked me to call this this segment, and he made this name up too. Uh-oh. He asked me, he's asked I... me to call to call this segment Favcac. Oh. <laughs> don't in, don't incur. Don't Favcac. <laughs> if I had to choose my Favcac, like a... I would say that Sounds my like fav, bar. my Favcac. Uh it's gotta be Armand the third. Um he was just the he was just the most interesting character to me in this show, this whole episode. Um it's just, uh, you know, he's, he's a little mysterious, a little sinister, um, uh, a little European, uh, a little effeminate. Um, but then he's also got Armand the seventh. And so what's that all about? This kid is Armand the seventh. So it's either his like, should have been like Armand great, the fifth. Right. Yeah, it's, it's either like exactly. his great, great grandson, or it's just like, he just keeps buying children and naming their mom on and I'm well, on the fourth. I'm on the fifth. I'm on the sixth. Well, George Foreman <laughs> did do that. He named five or six of his kids George, George the second, George the third. Yeah. And when he I had a daughter, he called her that. Georgina. So, so it's possible instead of going generationally, he just has a bunch of kids that he calls Armand. Yeah. yeah. You know. But that who's is your, that. That was my immediate thought too, Mike. So, who's your favorite character, Jackie? Favcac. Sounds like a candy bar. At candy best. bar two. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I didn't actually think about who my favorite character was because I didn't really have a favorite character. Um, like I actually did like uh, Kate Bishop, I, I, the main girl. Um, I thought like the actress did actually a really good job on her. Um, she had good timing. Um, what I didn't like mostly about her was just, and it's, it wasn't her, it was the writing of it, of like the fight choreography. Like if you skip the intro, um, you don't know that she was in like 
really decorated in karate or um, in fencing or in any kind of fighting. Mm -hmm. So if you skip that, you don't know that she's like trained in fighting. Um, And so I thought like, like, I think they may have mentioned it once or something once ever. And like, if you skip anything, then yeah, you skip it. But, um, but I also thought like, okay, there was something in there that I was like, what? Like she struggled to get in, to get in through a window, but she just kicked a bunch of guys' asses <laughs> that were like three times her size. And I'm like, that, no, what? Stop that. Stop that. Whoever's giving you that direction, <laughs> cut that shit off. Like you, you can lift your own weight if you can literally haul a guy over your shoulders or, you know, whatever. Um yeah. But that wasn't her fault. That's that's literally how it was written and whatever. But I actually really liked her. Uh, I liked her a lot. Um, and yeah, uh, I was gonna say uh, something important, but I can't remember. But yeah, I'd that say she was telling all the time. Her. I keep having important things and going. Oh, nah, just go for the joke. It happened to me just earlier. So. Yeah. So um, no, this is another fact check. But this is at the very very end, like after after the story you notice how like all of the other uh marvel shows had like yeah uh, the end credits where like they had all these graphics and all these like really cool things they this one didn't have it mm. it was just like oh straight to credits that's it like there and there was no um uh after credits or anything like that it was just wow, wow i don't this- think a lot of the shows had after credit scenes until like the last episode though um i think at least loki and wandavision didn't it was all, all the movies do right I, though yeah the right, movies but do the, but, but uh but, but the but shows the, i thought right. the shows did i didn't I mean, the, in, uh, on the last episode was it the last episode i thought there were a couple of them that had a few mid I I watched loki, of them. But, at least loki and wandavision was the last episode but regardless they all they all the other ones still had the uh end right. credits of like you know of what the character more interesting. It's not just a list of people. Yeah, this one didn't. So I was like, what the heck? That's weird. Mm -hmm. But anyway, sorry, go ahead. Now it's your turn, Ryan. You should should tell them. You should write them in a letter and say, hey, they know. They get better. They know. They They know. They know what they did. (laughs) (laughs) They're learning their lesson already. No, I mean, (laughs) it seems like it's getting, I'm assuming it's getting good reviews because everybody was kind of talking about it. I thought it was kind of all the rage. Um, but I'll tell you my favorite character out of this, uh, whew, this all-star group. Um, yeah, it's gotta be <laughs> Armand three because he was the only one that gave me anything yeah. beyond just being kind of just a regular character. You know, um, he, mm-hmm. he's the only one that gave anything extra, um, that did anything at all. And, and, yes. and in fact, in fact, I think uh, the lead is Kate, right? Could be an interesting yeah. character. Um, I don't know why that they, they want to always try to create a character that's super grouchy. That to me, yeah. that, that doesn't, <laughs> I don't usually enjoy, like, like, especially, you know, like if they're grouchy in a cute way, I don't know how to, you know, like, like say Bill Murray. Oh. No, like say Bill Murray, <laughs> like that's or his Oscar shtick. The grouch. Like that's his shtick. He's just kind of, oh, that's Bill. But I think if they're trying to make the character likable by being kind of rude to everybody, I'm like, yeah, that doesn't doesn't do much for me. But again, it wasn't a bad character. None of the characters were bad. They were all fine. Armand was slightly good. I, there wasn't anybody I disliked. There wasn't any any aspects I disliked. And yet, and to second with Jackie, what you were saying it was a little jarring to see her be such an incredible ninja where you're like, Whoa, where did this come from? I think they, they did mention she got a gold medal, I think in gymnastics for, I think it was yeah. gymnastics. Yeah. That, Other than that, gymnastics, she did fencing archery. Yeah. And... But, but just like in the said, story, yeah. not in the intro. So, so how are we supposed to know that that she's also an incredible like fighter, like gymnastics mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily translate. So anyway, and then like, she can also like do kick flips with, wine but bottles I, I, thought, I thought she won something in martial arts or something that maybe that's what it was yeah. so anyway yeah. it was just a little jarring for me maybe it was explained better than i'm than i'm remembering it but it was 
maybe, maybe I just needed to be like beaten over my head. Maybe it was a little too subtle for me, but that was just my own thing where I was like, Whoa, this girl can like literally do fucking everything like parkour, Mm -hmm. karate, kicking bottles, archery. Like she's like a super magic mutant hero. That struggles to get through a window. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and is it nice to people like if i was that badass yeah. i feel like i'd be like super nice like man my life is awesome how are you today you know mm-hmm. well she's like she's really grew up rich too so it's like yeah what does she have to complain about maybe that's why i mean i mean uh my dad I've, I've died i've i've known um i've known a few rich girls that were like crazy rich um and i wouldn't say like they're they line up to what she is, but I can say that they are like in my experience, uh, different. Like they just think, and they, they, they don't know that they're being rude either, um, of things just because they're just so completely ignorant. What of, are their names? They didn't, I'm, I'm not going to say who they are. I'm like, cause I'm so friends with them. Um, but no, I, but you know, I would just say like manners aren't, you know, bought necessarily they're Mm -hmm. they're taught so she probably wasn't taught manners and stuff like that so in my opinion it actually fits the rich girl kind of like i don't have to be nice to anybody i'm rich and even her mom established that she even said like hey look people who are young think they can do whatever they want people who are rich think they can do with it whatever they want and you're both like she calls her daughter out on that Mm -hmm. um so in her attitude makes sense like that's why I thought she did such a great job. Um, but yeah, like, you know, I'm, I wasn't expecting her to be this nice, sweet, like, Oh, I'm so polite to everyone. I'm just like, so happy with my life. It's like, no, she's, she's bored. It's very clear. Um, she is an overachiever because she wants attention because, you know, obviously like with her mom and her, her dad, obviously dying like at an early age. Um, she's rude because she never really, had to be taught manners or whatever um so in my opinion she nailed it but that's just me like you know i i wasn't expecting kate to be this nice uh happy-go-lucky or not necessarily happy-go-lucky but just charming person she doesn't have to be charming she's she's a rich bitch that's pretty much her so don't forget what jackie says everybody manners are taught not bought yeah, they are solid. That is correct. Mm-hmm. That's very mm-hmm. correct. I grew up poor, so I had to learn manners. I could not buy them. Oh, you should just mm-hmm. try buying them. It's they're not that expensive. Oh. <laughs> I, I hear they're they're a little expensive, but if I if I go on Etsy and have an artist teach me manners, yeah. and then I feel like I'm supporting a small mm-hmm. business and or yeah. like an artist, I feel you can like just, you can be- just go on Fiverr and then somebody can write <laughs> write a write a script for you, and then you can just download it like the Matrix, and then. You- <laughs> I'm getting exactly. really lost, but, <laughs> but there's a silver lining here. It is now time to talk about you, Jackie. What a oh, relief. Dear. I know. I know. Oh, this no, not even. All right. So word has it, Jackie, by the way, great background. We were commenting on that before the recording. Mm-hmm. Looking awesome. We've heard word that you're currently working on two new websites. The first of which is for cosplay merch. Could you tell us a bit about that? Ah. Yes. So, okay. Bit of a backstory. Um, since 2011, 2012, uh, when my, uh, uh, what is it? When my, uh, gosh, I can't Cat. even remember what it's called. Cat. No, well, uh, Witchblade. Sorry. When my Witchblade went viral, um, someone purchased my name like my domain like jacqueline right. and oh, that's dirty yeah yeah no it was very dirty they purchased it and i remember like i think it was 2013 or 14 or something i was like oh i should buy my website name so that way no one can sit on it and lo and behold somebody did mm-hmm. and then um sometime last year uh it expired and was up for sale i was like yes i finally have it um so i finally finally after like almost 10 years got my website uh my name website i was like yes i can finally build my website and then 
I got hired for like a gazillion things. And so I couldn't even friggin' do it. And, and then uh, now it's like New Year's. Hey, what's your New Year's resolution? I'm like, I'm going to get this crap done. I'm going to make, build my website. I'm going to get those out. And that way I don't have to worry about anything, but I still will be. But yeah, so this is like a long 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 dream coming like hey I finally can actually have my my name out there um so anyway so it's under my name JacquelineGoner.com and I will be uh posting all kinds of cosplay and my costume designing content on there um uh-huh. of course obviously on my Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and Twitter and all that I still have and I still will be posting content there that's that's all just like hey if you want to know what characters I've done. Here's the dozens and dozens of characters that I've done. Um, I will also be selling tutorial, not tutorials, uh, patterns, uh, merchandise, uh, and costume and cosplay stuff. Uh, as far as like props, um, ah. full on costumes, uh, pieces of costumes and stuff. Um, I primarily look at like um, Legend of Zelda stuff because I'm a huge Zelda fan and mm. I have a lot of like I have a lot of Zelda molds that I've made over the years. Whoa. So, um, so yeah, I sell, I would be selling stuff on there, including prints of my cosplays as well. Um, and then on the other side, yes. um, it won't be my name, but it's still, it will still be connected to my name. Like, like it won't be like Jacqueline Um, I it was like, I really like the name Astro Maiden. So I'm going to grab that. And so that's going to be my modeling site. So things that are like more modeling-esque, like sets, uh, prints, that sort of thing, I will be selling on that site just to differentiate them. Because Mm -hmm. some people, like especially when I do conventions and stuff, um, I uh, tend to show them like, oh, here's my Instagram. Here's like, I'd rather have just a portfolio for this, you know, the, so that's, those are the two sites. Sorry. That should have been, that should have been like less than 10 seconds to describe that. But Not anyway, all. That, I don't sites. know how you could have described that in less no, than 10 I don't seconds. Either, yeah. There's a ton of information yeah. there. When, do you know when these are going to be up? Um, I'm hoping by beginning of February, um, wow. like I've been cosplaying since early 2000s. Um, and I only just got through two hard drives of photos to organize everything that I've done. Um, because I know I have over, I want to say 80 or 90 cosplays that I've done Holy shit. in my lifetime. There's a wow. lot. And I've only found probably half of them between the mm. two hard drives that I have. And I know I have like another laptop up at my mom's up in Northern California. So I know I won't even be able to go up there until like, gosh, weeks later. So anyway, yeah. What's... So right now I'm like organizing all the photos, putting them all together, trying to get everything together. Like you'll, you will see not just like my newer costumes, you will see my old ass costumes, things that I am embarrassed about. You will see <laughs> So you're, do- you're putting stuff up yeah. you're embarrassed about. That's cool. Yes. <laughs> That is bold, a bold maneuver. Yeah. A bold <laughs> I maneuver. Actually, I actually loved. I actually love showing uh, costumes that I've done. Like my very first Zelda cosplay was awful. It was terrible. Um, and then my current one is is great. Um, it shows the journey. Oh, well, yeah, that's probably shows, inspiring to people because grown. they can see, like, okay, here's here's oh, yeah. here's what I was doing back then, and then look how I've progressed. And you could do it too. Just just buy mm-hmm. these patterns, and then you can. Yeah. So, but See it begs the I question, project? like Jackie, when you're talking about this, and I know this is probably going to be a very difficult question, but what's your favorite cosplay you've ever done? Ah, oh, man. I know. <laughs> out of it's 80 so or 90. Out of 80 or 90. Um, just, just top 20. Probably Princess Zelda, because one, I'm, I'm a huge, 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 massively huge Zelda fan. Mm-hmm. Um and this guy too. Uh, yay! Um, which one was your favorite game? I mean, my the, my my mainstay one was Ocarina of Time, so that's that's okay, mostly that's, what I played. But that's a common I've, one. I've watched some walkthrough of Breath of the Wild, and I would love to play that you one. You should but play. I, should have, I just don't have the time. You should play it. Yeah, but definitely I would love to. Find yeah. the time to uh, link to the past for me. Um, oh, okay. Wow, going old school. But, 
Yeah, I love Link to the Past. Um, oh, I and get then, it. That's a play uh, on words. That's cool. <laughs> I don't know. Da, 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 da. You see, Nintendo uh, just from from this forty years, fifty years later, and then your joke <laughs> finally got a laugh from Ryan. <laughs> I did, didn't get a laugh. I just got it. <laughs> anyway, sorry. So it's so it's Zelda. So yeah, Zelda. Um, probably Zelda twilight princess because one the build and two you know i love zelda um and then a very close second would be uh oof uh probably between witchblade and red sonia mm. i can't choose between the two i love them both <laughs> but yeah those those are my favorites which of- blade well the blade Witch of ronin blade. of course Oh, oh, stop it. (laughs) Anyway, well, that's cool. We are going to include all those goodies in uh, the the description box below. So definitely check out Jackie's goodies in the box below. Click on them, follow, subscribe, and, uh, you know, push the buttons, do the stuff. Uh, But now, speaking of pushing the stuff, It is time for, Mike's ready for it, the Karate Chop of Doom. It's the bottom line, everybody. Bottom line, underscoring the bottom line. And that's the only thing that we call it, nothing else. Right. Some people call it the terrible twos. Uh, Mike likes to call it the bottom line. Here we go. It's the final two questions of the show. Two most important questions, too. Michael Canyon Rosenberg, on a scale of one to ten, this is question number one, what would you rate this first episode of hot guy um did i watch the wrong show i watched a show called hawkeye on disney plus oh, hawkeye, um, sorry you guys keep talking about this other different show that Freudian i haven't heard of. Um, yeah i just i didn't care too much for this show it was like like a, I, I think someone else said and i said it was very they didn't take a lot of risks it was very mm-hmm. safe and very straightforward um as as, as jackie jack jacqueline has mentored mentioned very formulaic and um yeah but it's still marvel um so that gives us some points even though hawkeye is not my favorite character um so i just give i just just to be nice i give it a 4.5 wow you know the way you were describing it the way you were describing it just now, I was like typing in already 4.5 because you that means you <laughs> set the stage for a 4.5 in the way you were describing how you got to it. Well, that's um, why I gave it a 4.5. Those are my reasons. Yep. That's perfectly explained, I'd say. Jackie, on a scale of 1 to 10, what would you give this first episode of Cock Guy? I'd probably give it um, probably a 6.5. Uh, there are things that are set up that, you know, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm curious, but, uh, but there are things that were a little jarring. There were a few things that were like, what, what, like that were, that felt a little lazy or felt safe. Mm. Um, but I knew that coming in because it's a Marvel show. Um, Marvel tends to have a formula and they, you know, they didn't shock me or anything. This wasn't a Loki. This wasn't, you know, a WandaVision or anything like that. This was, this is an, another Marvel project. Um, but I do like keeping up with Marvel stuff. So I will be watching it again. And it wasn't like it was bad. So it's, it just wasn't, it didn't hook me right away with the first episode, but I have a feeling it might hook you by like episode three or four. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, just only watch just watch the first eight episodes and then you're you'll be hooked. <laughs> yeah. There well, you go, right? I'll tell you, um, this was a very, you know, safe show, as we said. It, it, it was an origin story. Uh it wasn't a it wasn't a show about hot hot guy. It was an origin story for a hot girl. And mm-hmm. so, you know, that made it formulaic, as you said, and there was nothing bad. There was not one thing that I thought was terrible. So I can't give it a sub five, really. I'm not gonna give I'm not gonna give it a pass because it's Marvel, but I'm also not gonna judge that against it because I expect a lot. But I was I was actually disappointed. I'll tell you when why am I holding crazy glue? I'll tell you when 
<laughs> Here, I can hold so, something random too, just to make you cool. feel normal. Thank you. So I'll tell you when the show ended, I didn't realize, I didn't realize that it was disappointing to me until the show ended. As soon as it ended and it went boom, yeah. drop credits, I said out loud, wow, that show did nothing for me. And then I said it again, that really did nothing for me. And that's when I realized, boy, this show did nothing for me <laughs> because that was my automatic reaction. Anyway, 5.5, which is a great average between Michael's 4.5 and Jackie's 6.5, but that's what I'm giving it 5.5 because it's nothing bad. It was fine. It was who, who did you say that to? I guess myself, like a freaking weirdo at one in the morning. <laughs> like I just, I, it just came out of me. I wasn't thinking it. I only thought it after it came out. It just ended. I said, wow, that did nothing for me. It, and I was like, well, I guess, <laughs> I guess I know how I feel about this show. Cause I was just surprised when it ended. I was like, oh, that's, that's like, the that's the ending. Of, that's, that's I just it? spent 50 minutes and it was just like, eh, it was nothing. It didn't. It didn't give me anything anyway. Yeah. But that's what we rated it. The most important question here is for the purposes of this podcast, we all had to watch the first episode of Marvel's hot guy. And I said it right for you, Michael, but now that the podcast is over and we're free to move about the internet, Michael Canyon Rosenberg, would you watch the second episode of your own volition? Yeah, I would. Um, begrudgingly I would. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and 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 I am oh. giving it a pass because it's Marvel, um, and I am just going to watch it just because I'm I'm a Marvel completist, and I want to see everything that Marvel does. You know, because oh. if you miss something, like you could be watching a movie and you're like, wait, what what is that about? Oh, right. and then they can, oh well, that was obviously explained in Hawkeye. So if you haven't watched Hawkeye, uh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know how you expect to know everything. Um, but so that's the only reason I would watch the the. The next episode and the rest of it, I I, I will. Uh, my wife, when she we got done watching it, she's like, ah, I'm not watching any more of that. <laughs> she's like, it's on. You're on your own with this one, buddy. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I had to like drag her to watch Wandavision. After I watched the the next few episodes, I was like, baby, you gotta you gotta stick with it. You gotta you gotta see these next yeah. episodes. Um, it, it was hard for her though, as you know, as as Ryan can attest, he didn't care much for the first episode. Uh, she didn't care much for the first episode and it was like pulling teeth trying to get her to watch it but i did mm -hmm. you pulled the teeth huh? well jackie yeah, i got them in my in a, i didn't in my know you were a dentist in a That's jar awesome. jackie Congrats. would you we may have gotten a hint but would you watch the uh, <laughs> the second <laughs> episode a, well subtle hint <laughs> oh yeah of course yeah no i i see uh i see a lot of potential i see a lot of things that i can like and they're it's marvel so you you kind of have to expect things to kind of be a little lazy here and there, not like lazy here and there. Like there's lots of things that are very high quality or whatever, but there are things that just like the defying of physics of things or things that just mm. don't make sense because of some writer who decided, Hey, wouldn't it be cool if we make her struggle through a friggin' window? I'm not going to get over that. <laughs> I don't, I don't like that at all. That made me, I was like, girl, you just kicked three, friggin guys ass who were like twice your size or three times your size i don't know how much anytime but um <laughs> they're big they were huge like where's the logic behind all that anyway but no I, I i see a lot of potential um i definitely like uh what the actress brought with uh with kate um and you know it'll be fun i think it'll be fine like mm -hmm. people i think the people who did rave about it were multiple episodes in it wasn't like first episode in and like oh mm -hmm. you guys gotta watch this or anything like that so it's like okay um let's give it another shot so let's give it a few more episodes mm -hmm. um yeah okay. so that's well, me i'm not nearly as forgiving if something is fine <laughs> fuck no uh so uh for me it's it's a no it's an easy no um and, and I, and I do think that it might be uh, kind of like what Michael, you were saying, you know, something about like being a Marvel completist. I did think a couple of times, Hey, maybe I've missed some things in other shows or other movies that I may have missed. 
that would have made this more entertaining, you know, maybe I, or, or maybe if I knew about the source material, I'd be raving about, it. I'd be like, Oh my God, it's so close to the source material. The, the, the comic books were super boring too. This is perfect. This is exactly what it's supposed to be, but I'm not close to the source material. I haven't watched any show. In fact, because strictly because of the source material, except for the X-Men movies, that's the only movies I've seen, but I haven't, other than that, you know, that doesn't, you know, it has to be good for me. I'm not really addicted to the source material personally. So it's a no for me. Um, I wish it well. I wish it gets better, but, but I'll never know. Uh, well, this, but anyway, this, first, this first season, I mean, this first and probably only season, if the other Marvel shows are, I, mean, I guess Loki said they were going to have another season, but, uh, hmm. uh, but the other Marvel shows kind of ended after one season, but there's only six episodes. And just kind of checking ahead on IMDb, uh, these first two episodes are both seven point something, uh, but then the other four episodes are all eight point something. So, so yeah. it does, it does kinda, get better. So I feel like they all consistently get better, but I will say they might want to consider making the first episode good too. Just a thought. <laughs> uh, Loki was damn well, good to me. Yeah, I I think though um, with certain in characters it's hard to like loki started out strong because one loki's already right. a huge massive favorite right um and the right. same with mm-hmm. with uh uh i wouldn't oh, say wanda awesome. because yeah yeah exactly um so i think the reason why like loki had such a head start because i mean tom to, uh, todd Hiddle, uh, hiddleston can't even yeah. say his last name um Hiddleston brought so much to Loki that you just friggin' love. Like you're not supposed to really like Loki. Like he's a he's a well, not a villain, but kind of an anti-hero. So but yeah, it he had such a strong start. So it was a little unfair to compare it to that. Um, especially since Hawkeye is usually, you know, most people's least favorite Avenger. You yeah. know. But I you can't hold it against the, them. But, you know, it could still be no, a good you can't show. you can't hold it against him. But at the same time, when you have your least favorite, you know, character out, out of a group, usually that's kind of where you want to make the interesting choices, where you want to go in different directions or whatever. And it's like, we're going to play it safe because we don't know. Mm-hmm. We don't know what to do with him or whatever. Right. Um, and I see why right. they focused on her, because she's obviously going to be taking his place in the Avengers group or whatever. But um, and it's good to establish her. Yep. But yeah, he was he was kind of an, yeah he was kind of an afterthought like mm-hmm. in this episode, and I can understand um the dislike towards it because you know obviously it's named Hawkeye and we're talk we're watching him mm-hmm. go through a musical in New York and talk to his kids at a restaurant, getting free food and feeling uncomfortable about it, like oh. Okay, that's it. And then you see like li- literally three minutes of him fighting and not even using a bow and arrow or anything, just fighting. Uh, and he was towel whipping people. I was like, Ooh. he was like, <laughs> I was like, what? You don't have like a, like a knife or something, but I guess they, they don't want to show, you know, that kind of violence or something. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Everybody at home, if you want to see that kind of violence, just be aware that we've also reviewed Loki. We've reviewed Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh, Let's see. WandaVision WandaVision. was our episode number 44. Falcon and the Winter Soldier was episode number 54. And uh, what was the other one? Loki. Loki was episode number 65. So if you want to check ah, those out, def- we also did uh, MODOK was episode 67. The Avengers United They Stand oh, yeah. was episode 62. Lots of uh, Marvel stuff. We've done a lot of Marvels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So check that out. Okay. I feel like I've rated all of them relatively similarly. Um, but everybody check those out. Uh, but we got to run now. So if you'd like us to review a show in the comments below, just say WTF or type WTF and whatever the show is that you'd like us to review, review, that's watch the first. We will do that. And I guess what I'm trying to say is this podcast was pretty cool. And also I liked uh, Jackie's shirt and her background. 
Yay. That's funny. This, funny this podcast, <laughs> this podcast was a great review of a subpar show. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast was brought to you by Send Noodles. Send Noodles. Not send nudes, but send noodles. Like the guy that Mike mentioned before this podcast even started. Who was that noodles, guy, Mike? Yep. Noodles. <laughs> I mentioned uh, noodles. noodles, the guitarist of the Offspring, too. So there's, so now oh, we're all right, set. You did too. Mm-hmm. There we go. Everybody so, contributed. And speaking of contributing, always remember what Mr. Michael Cannon Rosenberg likes to say. Don't forget to register to be an organ donor. Just go to donatelife.com or .net. Oh man, so it's kind of like disappearing a little it bit. Having trouble. <laughs> uh, donate life, and then go there and. Click on register and register to be an organ donor. Someone could get a kidney like I did, or someone can get a liver or a heart or a pancreas or what else? There was other things, but I forget. Uh, But the point is you can help save lives and uh, help heal people too. But after you do that, first go register to be an organ donor. After you're done doing that, then just don't forget to watch the first of things. 